Welcome to my Eldari painting series. In this video, I'm going to be painting up Giant Zar and her Howling Banshees. The first thing I'm going to do is prime. So I put everything on a paint stick like this to speed things up. I'm going to be priming Zenithil with black followed by white primer. I apply this with an airbrush, but you can use an aerosol can as well. Make sure you cover everything really well with the black primer. Afterwards, spray on some white primer at a 45 degree angle all the way around to create the Zenithil effect. For this paint job, I'm going to be using the following speed paints. Blinding Light, Palette Bone, Runic Grey, Peachy Flesh, Enchanted Steel, Glittering Loot, Orc Skin, Blood Red, Slaughter Red, Hardened Leather, and Grim Black. And for the regular acrylic war paints, I will be using Mummy Robes, Goblin Green, Pure Red, Lava Orange, Elven Flesh, Matte White, and Matte Black. You'll notice that I'll be painting everything in increasingly dark colors as I go. Starting with the lightest color speed paint, I'm going to put blinding light on only one area, which is going to be the face mask of Giant's Art. For all the body armor, I'm going to be using palette bone and I'm going to be thinning it down a little bit with speed paint medium. This has basically the same color, but it will make the color less intense. I didn't want the bone armor to be too brown, so the medium kind of tempers it down a little bit. Palette Bone is also a very light color, so if you end up overshooting into the other areas that are supposed to get other colors, don't worry about it. The darker colors that I will put on afterwards will just paint right over it. The Palette Bone for Giant Zar goes on the same way as it does all the rest of the Howling Banshees, which is mainly on the breastplates, on the arms, and on the legs. And also don't forget the armor on the back. For all the stones and pedestals that Giant Zar and the Howling Banshee stand on, I'm going to be using Runic Grey on these. This is a bluer tinge of grey and it looks really good on these stone-like features. I also paint up the pedestal of this little statuette in this Runic Grey. For those of you who built your Howling Banshees with an exposed head, you can use peachy flesh on any of the exposed flesh areas. This is a nice bright skin color that's great for elves. The skin areas on this little idol piece can also be painted in this peachy flesh color. Next I move to Enchanted Steel. This is a really nice bluish steel metallic color from Army Painter and it goes on like any other speed paint. You will put these on any of the swords and also the barrels of the guns. I also decided to make the magazines of the guns silver so any of the underslung magazines on the pistols or the ones that are strapped along the belt will get the silver. This sickle staff on the totem will also get some silver. On Giant Zara's Blade of Destruction, I put this color onto the blade itself and onto the Silent Death, all three of the blades will get this Enchanted Steel color. Moving on to Glittering Loot, which is the next darkest color, I am going to apply this onto mainly Giant Zar. I put this metallic gold speed paint onto this area of the Blade of Destruction and also onto its pommel right here. This gold speed paint also goes on the center hub of the Silent Death. These areas of Giant Zara's headgear get the gold treatment also on her pauldrons. Next, paint the Vambraces or at least the trim on the Vambraces gold. And there are a few other areas as well on her belt. There are these areas here that you want to paint gold. She has gold earrings, so put gold there. And there are other areas that I'll show you in this montage where I decided to paint her gold as well. It's really honestly up to your judgment. Putting gold on her gives her a little bit of distinction. She will look different from the rest of the Howling Banshee. She is a Phoenix Lord after all, so you want to make her look special. But at the same time, don't overdo the gold too much. 
Moving up the darkness chart, I'm going to go to Orc Skin next. And since I play Beltan, I'm going to try to copy over the green helmets of the Beltan army. So on all my Howling Banshees, even though they usually get white helmets, I decided to customize them a little bit and put this Orc green onto the helmets. Besides that, there's also Arm Sashes that can get this green color and also the loincloth area that hangs down below your waist, you want to paint that green. For the robes on this little totem guy, I also decided to put green on it. For Jainzar, this orc green goes on these two ribbons that are on the Blade of Destruction. I also decided to put it on the little hair tie that is all the way on the ground over here. It just adds a little bit of a nice accent color, makes her look a little bit more like she's aligned with the craft wool of Beltan. And then also her loincloth in the middle will get green. For the fiery red hair of the Howling Banshees, I'm going to be using Blood Red and then thinning it down just a little bit with some medium. I didn't want the red to be too loud, but really this is your choice. If you want it to be loud, do not thin it down. And when you apply this paint, use a nice broad brush. This will hold a lot of paint. And when you apply it onto the natural creases of the hair, it will seep into the recesses and make the rest of it nice and bright. If you model any open heads on any of your Howling Banshees, be sure that the front scalp area also gets this proper red hair color. The little figure on the totem also gets some red hair. And then for Giant Zara, I'm going to do something a little bit different from the Howling Banshees. If you look at the box art, she actually has two long streaks of white that go down the left and the right hand side of her mane. In order to do that, since you've already basically zenithal primed everything white, you can leave two strips of zenithal painted white and then just carefully freehand around it with your blood red paint. So what you're doing is you're basically creating a line as you paint the red and then just kind of fill in the red area and whatever you want white, just leave it white. The next color I'm going to use is Slaughter Red Speed Paint. This is optional based on how I painted my army. So my Beltan army has Slaughter Red colored weapons. So any hilts or any of the main bodies of guns and so on get this dark Slaughter Red color. So this is optional. It really depends on what your color scheme is. You can basically skip this step or you can paint whatever accent color you chose for your weapons in this step. The second darkest color that I'm going to be using is Hardened Leather Speed Paint. This is going to go on all the satchels and the packs and the gun holsters around the Howling Banshees. So anything that looks like a belt, a strap, a pouch, or a pistol holster will get this brown. Now for the darkest speed paint color of all, it's going to be Grim Black. This goes on only a select few areas, on the grips of the swords, on any of these weapon areas, like over here by the trigger, and then also at the back of the pistol, and these little vents in the helmets. On Giant Zar, I paint the grip of her Blade of Destruction with this Grim Black speed paint. And the three-pronged grip of her silent death also gets grim black. To make her mouthpiece look dark and menacing, I put grim black in this area too. And the tubes and the sides of her mask get grim black. Now I switch to acrylic war paints, starting with mummy robes. I'm going to be using this as a highlight color on all the bone armor. So I do this because honestly, palette bone can make these parts look really dark. So I use a finer brush and I apply this mummy robe, which is a off-white color onto all the upper areas of the bone armor. I always like to say, what would light do or WWLD? Basically light 
tends to shine from the top and only highlights areas that are closest to the light source. So you do not have to highlight every single line. You only need to put the highlights on the areas that are closest to the top light source. So as you're applying this highlighting step or any of the highlighting steps, always imagine that there is a diffuse light coming from the top of the model and any of the high ridges or any of the high edges of the armor will get highlighting. Everything else you can kind of leave it darker. While you do any sort of highlighting with acrylic paint, be sure to thin the paint down a little bit so it's a little bit more flowy and then it won't look jagged or gummed up as you lay it down. You want to use a fine brush so you can catch the edges of the armor and so on. And also one of the pro tips that I could give is to blend, just simply use water. After you lay down the acrylic before it dries, just put some water on your brush and then you can actually thin out and spread the paint a little bit to give it a blending effect without having to put multiple different layers of different colors. Just use water and then spread the paint out a little bit like I'm showing here. The next highlighting color is going to be Goblin Green. And this is an acrylic color that you'll want to thin down a little bit. You want to put it on the center strip of the helmet here if you did the paint scheme the same that I did. And then you can blend it out a little bit with water like I mentioned before. And then on any of the sashes, on any of the loincloths. And you'll notice I don't highlight everything. I only highlight the main colors which is bone white and green. Everything else, I kind of let the speed paints do its thing. I only accentuated the highlights for these two main colors because they are the biggest areas and will garner the most focus. Okay, I'm going to do one last highlight, which is going to be on the pure white mask on Giant Czar. So this mask looked a little bit faded and kind of blended in too much. So in order to make the edges pop a little bit, I applied pure matte white speed paint, thinned down slightly, onto all the high edges closest to the light source. I also did some matte white highlighting onto the top edges of her white streaks on both the left hand and the right hand sides of her hair. This created a little bit more pop in those white streaks and allows you to have a point of interest and focus. For the soul stones and the helmet viewports, I'm going to be using pure red acrylic paint and applying it with a detailing brush onto any of the soul stones that I come across on the Howling Banshees or on Giant Czar. On the eyepieces on any of the helmets, I paint those red also. To add a glare effect onto the soul stone and the eyepieces, I use lava orange acrylic paint and with a very small brush, I just put swooshes on the soul stones and little dots or slight swooshes onto the eyepieces. For any of the exposed heads that you optionally put on your Howling Banshees, you can use a simple treatment of matte white applied into the eye sockets with a detailing brush, followed by using a toothpick, dipping it into matte black paint and then putting pupils onto the eyes. This is a very quick way to put eyes on miniatures without too much effort. If the skin on the model looks a little bit washed out and you want to accentuate it, you can use some Elven Flesh acrylic paint and apply it onto the forehead and the cheek areas, maybe a little bit on the nose, just to make those skin areas pop out. To finish things off, use a broad old brush and some black primer and just clean the rims up with some of that primer. This just takes away the overspray and makes everything look nice and neat. For basing, I keep it simple. I use some of this brown flocking and some white glue or Elmis glue. I use a very old brush, put it on top of the base, and then after that, take the whole base and dunk it into the flocking material. This creates a nice, clean looking finish and afterwards you can always embellish it more which I'll show you in a little bit. The next optional step is to put tufts on the bases. You can do this with super glue and a little something to move the flocking away. Put some super glue in those areas and then apply the tufts on. This will keep them permanently on the base and they will not fall out as you're gaming. 
Apply one coat of gloss varnish followed by one coat of matte varnish to protect your paintwork. Here are the final results for Giant Zara and her troop of Howling Banshees. And this is a very easy scheme that really only took me a total of 2 hours to paint up. Thank you for watching and I hope this video was helpful for you. Please follow along for other videos that I'm going to be doing for my Aldari. Until the next time, happy hobbying and I will see you soon.